It is good to be together today. I want to invite our ushers to come on down, pass out our friendship folders, an opportunity for you to sign in and pass them down the road, learn the names of people that you are worshiping with today. I'm excited to have Eric and Nelson with us at the piano today. As these folders are coming around, let's take a moment, stand up and say good morning to those around us. So today at 1.30, we start an adventure that we are going to begin the preparation for our annual Palm Sunday concert. If you have a voice and you have ever sung in the car or shower, you are encouraged to join us today at 1.30. Just show up. We are all fright reading together and we're all in this together as we're figuring it out. So show up right here at 1.30. Love to include you. But let us join together in our opening response. Who are we gathered here this morning? And what is God's goal for each of us? Good. Let sunrise people worship God.
all God's people said, Amen. Kids, come on. Let's get up here before Jen gets up here. <laughs> Good morning, guys. You know me? Are you sure? I know you guys. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, how are you? It's good to see you guys. Oh my goodness. What are you? I'm from Mystery Island. From Mystery Island? I was at Mystery Island at VBS. Yep, you're right. I'm guilty of that. So, I want to tell you guys a little secret that I wrote my children's sermon on Wednesday. Who remembers what the weather was like on Wednesday? <laughs> Warm. Did you wear short sleeves and play outside? Yep, so you're going to have to imagine a little bit warmer time than today. But who else knows what Wednesday was? Yes, Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. And so Ash Wednesday is the start of Lent. And Lent is the time that's leading us up to Easter. Who likes Easter? Right? Easter's great. We love Easter. You get to do a scavenger hunt. Yes, scavenger hunt. Sunrise will have a scavenger hunt. and represents Jesus. And Easter is a great, good job. Yes, it represents Jesus. I was thinking about that. I'm glad you said represents because I was thinking about the things that I do when it's spring and warm. And so remember, we're imagining it's Wednesday's weather, not today's weather. And I, first thing I do is I get my windows cleaned off because I want to open up the windows and use the screen doors and let all that fresh air in because it's so beautiful. I probably won't do that today, huh? No, probably not. So it's opening up. And it made me think that in Lent, guys, one of the things we do is open up our, what is this? What is this? We open up our, our Bibles, right? I want to read you Ephesians. Can you say that? Ephesians chapter one. And we're going chapter one, verse three. And Miss Jen has to take her glasses off. Oh, question? Yeah. Jesus was born on Christmas Day. That is absolutely correct. Thank you. So, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Blessed us. That's pretty awesome, huh? So we're, oops, I'm sorry, Molly. We open up our Bibles. Now, another thing that we do, remember, we're pretending it's a warm, beautiful 60-degree day, and when it's time to clear out stuff in our closet, right? Like, we, we'll pretend we don't need a stocking cap and a scarf, right? Time to kind of clear out the things that we're not using. And in Lent, it's a good to clear out our lives of the things we don't really need. Can you guys think of stuff that we maybe do daily that we don't really need to do? Video games. Video games? Oh, you got that. Yep, absolutely. Some screen time, right? Maybe not being kind to others. What else, Molly? Giving up junk food, being more healthy. That's a great point. Absolutely. Uh, you have a question? Yes. And God presented Jesus because he is when he grew up. You're right. He grew up. And we're learning about that time that he's grown up during Lent. That's awesome. Have you guys ever seen one of these? I probably won't want to shake it. I might get some. It's a duster. So another thing that I like to do in spring is I dust. I don't say, I shouldn't say I like to do. It's something that I really need to do a lot of, right? And so I dust things off and I clean up. I clean all the dirt in my house. And for Lent, it's good for us to ask ourselves, what kind of things do I need to clean up? Have I said some? I do have a duster. Do I need to clean up? You have one too? Good. Sometimes I need to clean up in myself. I've had maybe negative thoughts, right? Or haven't been as kind to others as I should have been, and I can clean that up. And then, and I can't wait to answer all your questions. I have two more. Have you guys ever seen these things? Yes, yes. You have? They're supposed to be for gardening. Now, Miss Jen doesn't have the greenest of thumbs, but I can plant marigolds. And so in the spring, when there's not snow on the ground, I enjoy planting those flowers. Flowers are beautiful, and it makes me think about beautiful things in our lives that we can create by ourselves. So think about in Lent, um, can we plant different kinds of seeds, seeds of love in the hearts of others when we're kind? Or can we tell someone about Jesus, right? Yeah. 
So there's a lot of great things we can do this Lent. I also wanted to take a minute. We, some, some of our friends here have an adventure they're going on, right? And they get to move and try new things. And we want to send them with our prayers. And so I, will you pray with me as we pray for our friends who are, where are you going to move to? Virginia. So Lord, we're going to ask the Lord to be with Elin and Luke and Molly and Ford and Bo as we send our prayers with them to Virginia. Dear Jesus, we love you. Help us to open up our Bibles, clear out our clutter, dust off our messes, and plant seeds of love this Lenten season. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go to Sunday school. That is a lot of energy, isn't it? That's great. <laughs> Spring cleaning. For our soul. Here we are, Lent. And on the first Sunday of Lent and also the first Sunday of the month, we pause for communion today. We remember the night in which the Lord Jesus gave himself up for us. In the middle of a Passover meal, he uh, took the bread, he offered a blessing, and he broke it. And he altered the tradition of Passover and said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. The same supper, he reached into the center of the table and took hold of the chalice. And he said, this is my blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves as living sacrifice in a new day of love for our Lord Jesus Christ. In these next few moments, a reminder that our communion table is open to everyone. All are welcome. It is Christ who invites to the table, not our tradition. You don't need to be baptized, don't need any particular credential in order to receive communion. Holy communion, a tangible way that we experience the presence of Christ. Our communion stewards, I invite forward at this time, as they're coming, a reminder that as we come, that you'll be invited to come through the side aisles here and you'll receive um, a wafer that can dissolve on your tongue and a uh, cup of grape juice. Likewise, on this side, you'll come by the center aisle there and then return to your seats. Uh, we come to the table of the Lord, receiving the tangible presence of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come, come to the table. Can't say how the days will unfold. Can't change what the future may hold. But I want you in it. Every hour, every minute. This world can race by far too fast hard to see while it's all flying past but it's clear now when you're standing here now i am meant to be wherever you are next to me and all i wanna do is come running home to you come running home to you and all my life i promise to keep running home to you keep running home you. 
And sometimes when I'm feeling alone, then to me there's a path that is shown. And it's clear now when you're standing here now. Meant to be always standing next to me. And all I wanna do is come running home to you. Come running home to you. And all my life I promise to keep running home to you. Keep running home to you. <clears throat> and I could see it right from the start, right from the start, that you would be, be my light in the dark, light in the dark. Oh, you gave me no other choice but to love you. All I wanna do is come running home to you, come running home. And all my life I promise to Keep running home to you, keep running home to you, to you. Can't say how the days will unfold, can't change what the future may hold. I want you in it every hour, every minute. And all I wanna do is come running home to you, come running home, home to you. Lord, we come to you in this time of turmoil and uncertainty. The war in Ukraine is weighing on us. We pray for peace. We pray for all the people in the world who are in harm's way, for all the refugees, people hurting, having no place to stay, and are lacking food. We pray for the refugees that Sunrise is caring for, and the team that cares for them. Lord, give us all calm and grace to deal with the anxiousness of war, disease, and economic uncertainty. Help us to focus on your presence and that we listen to your spirit and words more than the noise of the world and the news around us. We pray for our leaders and the leaders in the world that they find a peaceful way forward. We pray for the people in the Ukraine who are suffering. We pray for all the soldiers. Lord, we also pray for our enemies, as hard as that is. We especially pray that the hearts and minds of Putin and the Russian leadership is changed. Lord, please show us where you want us to do our part. Please give us the strength and guidance to focus on the things that we can change, where we can make a difference. Lord, let us not forget that there are a lot of opportunities 
to be your voice, your hands, and your feet right here in our local community. We also pray for the United Methodist Church. We pray that you will give us patience and grace to deal with the postponement of the General Conference. May we focus on loving our neighbor, even when we don't agree on some issues. Lord, call us to get up and not to stay down in despair. You are with us always. May your love flow through us into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Whether you are in the room physically right now, or you are in the comfort of your own home joining us for worship today, this is a moment when we are all connected through the gifts that we bring, and we come together to make a difference for the kingdom of God. You can text the gift to Sunrise at 719-270-4478. You can mail in a gift or drop off a gift to the church office, but right now I invite the ushers to come forward as our offering is received.
And all God's people said, Please be seated. Good morning, sunrise. Uh, a winter wonderland out there. What a gift. Uh, I know my soul still feels the weight and the burden of the war in Ukraine. And there's no escaping that as uh, we watch winter happen here and been viewing images of the destruction, uh, the death, this displacement, the chaos of war, and uh, weigh heavy and pray God's peace. Uh, makes me hunger for the word of the Lord. And I know we're eager, and Samantha's eager to read, so let us pray. Lord our God, open our hearts, open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as Samantha reads our scripture and your word is proclaimed, we can hear with joy what it is you have to say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 35 through 43. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they had said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion. People were people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took the girl by her hand and, and said to her, Talitha, kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age, and this, at, at this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them to, that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Samantha. Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. Talitha kum, get up. We hear that expression often, don't we? Get up. Aaron Sorkin says, you're going to fall down, but the world doesn't care how many times you fall down as long as it's one fewer than the number of times you get back up. Remember, Stuart Mowbray said, fall down seven, get up eight. Ray Bradbury says, too late. I found you can't wait to become perfect. You got to go out and fall down and get up with everybody else. Rochelle Goodrich wrote, you're right, I do fall down a lot, but that wouldn't be true if I never stood back up. Martin Lawrence was interviewed and he said, I'm most proud of the blessings that God has bestowed upon me in my life. He's given me the vision to truly see that you can fall down, but you can still get back up. Hopefully I'll learn from my mistakes and have the opportunity to strengthen and improve the next time I can do. And finally, Jen Sorinso says, you have to be willing to fall down, get up, 
look stupid, cry, laugh, make a mess, clean it up, and not stop until you get there. No matter what. Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. We hear the wisdom of get up, especially when we fall, when the circumstances of life come our way and we find ourselves on the ground. It's time to get up. The scriptures weigh in also in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 12. It's when Moses is guiding the people of Israel out of the wilderness and on the way to the promised land in chapter 9, verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, Moses, get up, go down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought from Egypt have acted corruptly. They have been quick to turn from the way that I have commanded them, they have cast an image for themselves. They made a golden calf. And the Lord intervenes and says, Moses, get up, go down and make a correction. The prophet Jeremiah wrote, You shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, When people fall, do they not get up again? If they go astray, do they not turn back? Jesus, in another portion of the Gospels, in Luke chapter 17, he has healed a crippled man, and he says to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. In the Acts of the Apostles, Peter is offering a healing and says, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. And immediately he got up. Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Are you catching the theme of the day? Get up? <laughs> I thought it was pretty rude in that uh, Acts passage when Peter says, uh, Jesus Christ heals you, get up and make your bed. For all the kids out there that their mothers remind them of exactly. You can quote the scriptures now, parents. <clears throat> get up, make your bed. Oh, get up and make your bed. I am aware that when I hear get up, there's times when I know that my knees aren't what they used to be, and there are times when I feel unstable, and I know that on a day like this, I'm going to step outside, and there'll be a lot more snow, and it'll feel slippery as I'm walking to my car, and I'll be thinking in the back of my mind, oh no, I'm going to be out here lying in the parking lot thinking, I've fallen, and I can't get up. And someone will have to call 911, and invite a Duffy Crane to come in and <laughs> hoist me back onto my feet. Uh, I've fallen, and I can't get up. And yet my faith in all forms says it's time to get up. Here we are in the midst of the knowledge that falling and talking about physically falling is actually the easy way to discuss getting up. Because in truth, it's instinctual for us when we fall to get back up again. And when we get back up again, we become aware that we can keep moving and we will. It may be painful, but we will. What's more problematic at times is the ways in which our emotions or our decisions or the circumstances of life knock us down or a mistake in our past, or in our present, in the moments when life is changing, and we find ourselves metaphorically down. We hear the call, get up, get up. We hear the wisdom and the truth of that. It comes from our secular life at all times, and it also comes in our faith 
life, and especially from Jesus today. As Jesus took hand of her Talitha Kum, he said, which means little girl, get up. In the Ukraine, we are ready for this to be over and for our world and Eastern Europe to get back up again. Perry Perez, a Florida man, said, I will never forget their bravery as long as I live. I thought I knew what bravery was. And then I saw the Ukraine. I hear that as we are seeing scenes of cities that look like World War II, other places of war, that our hearts are anxious and disrupted. We watch families displaced and we cry out, why? Why have we fallen so far? How does our world get back to it and get up again? If only this could be over and we could begin that process again. Let's get back up again. Jesus takes hold of us and says to Letha Kum, little girl, get up. Are you searching in your own life, in your own circumstances where you've fallen and you know the wisdom of Jesus when he says, get up? Each and every one of us is a little girl in need of getting up. In the moment when the people are uh, approaching Jesus and the leader of the synagogue and they're giving the message to the leader of the synagogue, your daughter is dead. And they become hysterical. They're reacting to this news and the chaos prevails and Jesus says in that moment, do not fear, only believe. And as they continue to hear Jesus talk in that way, he says, why do you make a commotion and weep? Then they start to laugh at him that he too is not distraught by the news and he invites Peter and James and John to come with him and the leader of the synagogue and they go to his home and there he walks in and invites the leader of the synagogue and his wife to enter to where the child is. She's 12 years old and he says she is not dead. She's merely sleeping and he took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha Kum, which means little girl, get up. And they were amazed. And he tells them to tell no one. Oh, how we yearn for this story to be ours and the world's knowledge that in the midst of the chaotic moments, Jesus' intervention will correct things so cor amazingly and miraculously. But sometimes the story is not the complete overturn of the circumstances. It's our misunderstanding of them. But the remaining core message is one that the Christian tradition has held on to. The words of Jesus, Talitha Kum, little girl, get up. In our faith, get up. Always. Always. Thomas Dorsey a man of great faith, the son of a Baptist pastor, and a musician. He is responsible for hundreds of uh, musical arrangements that are sacred music. He was asked to offer uh, his gift of leading music from Chicago to travel to St. Louis, Missouri in the 1930s. And he was aware that his wife, Nettie Harper, was expecting a child. His wife, Nettie, said, you must go. He challenged her. 
and said, I need to be with you. She said, go. You need to lead the music at the revival. She was great with child. Off he went. In 1934, an African-American man driving a Model A through Illinois to St. Louis. He arrived safely in St. Louis and began the revival. The second night of the revival, he was handed a telegram. The telegram read, your wife has died in childbirth. Your son was born. Instantly, friends surrounded him. One friend helped him that night drive through the night back to Chicago through Illinois from St. Louis. He arrived at the hospital in time to hold his infant son only to become aware that he'd arrived in time for his son's final breaths and his infant son died in his arms as well. Doesn't that sound horrific? Just horrible? He was distraught. Rightfully so. The person who tells the story says he was inconsolable. Inconsolable. We can understand his heart was broken. He opened the Bible and he turned to Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me in the day of my trouble. I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. In such moments, Thomas Dorsey was trained to continue to turn to the Lord. He opened the scriptures. And out of that scripture, he began to hear how his Lord was offering a hand. Much like in the moment of scripture, we hear Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. In a moment, we'll be singing what Thomas Dorsey had put down in poetry. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. Hold my hand lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and gone, at the river I stand. Guide my feet. Hold my hand. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. We hear the words of Jesus, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. Talitha kum. Have you been noticing our graphic for this sermon series? Jesus' own words. Jesus' own words. We're hearing this word Talitha kum. And uh, as we see that and we see others, I don't know about you, but when I look at that, I'm like hard-pressed to figure out what's on that screen. 
The, the font, you can tell that it's been adapted from uh, the Hebrew caricatures, but it's English letters attempt to help us focus. You know, Jesus' words are like that. We know they're there, but it's hard to understand them sometimes. It's hard to focus in and comprehend what it means. And when we see something like Talitha Kum, we can't even pronounce it, much less begin to see some of the other words there that, oh my gosh, what are we in store for in terms of our vocabulary? The adventure for us in these next few weeks is to hear Jesus' own words. Talitha Kum is one of those. Little girl, get up. Some of you will know that the Bible comes to us in English and it's translated many different times in order to come to us so we can read it in English. But a few words through the translations are not touched like Talitha Kum. In our English translation, it still is there and then it says, which means so that we can understand. I think it's kind of critical that there are certain words in the New Testament that are not translated. They stay in their original language. Talitha kum is one of those Jesus' own words. Remember, the Bible, there are two parts. The Hebrew scriptures that are written in Hebrew and looks a lot like that. And then there's the Greek New Testament and the authors of the Gospels wrote in Greek. Jesus spoke a language Aramaic, Aramaic, kind of an offshoot of Hebrew. It's a dead language. Or is it alive? Jesus' own words are still ours. And I believe it's significant that there are a few words that the earliest Christian tradition said, these are so important. Let's pay attention to them. Let's honor them. Let's not translate them. Let's allow them to be true. How's that for a commercial, for a nerdy way to look at scriptures and to awaken our faith? But for me, there's an excitement about the core of Jesus' message and those who proclaim before us that in the most ugly circumstances of life, there is a truth that comes from our Lord. Little girl, get up. I pray that as we continue to live out our faith, we'll hear the truth that has been born in our culture, in our way of living, in our desire, in our instincts to say, when we have fallen, get up and keep living. Jesus commands us in our life by offering his hand. Little girl, get up. And when I'm in the presence of the Lord, I'm a little girl, and I'll get up. The word of the Lord today, Talitha Kum. Amen? Amen. Our music team will help us sing the words of Thomas Dorsey. I pray you'll hear the profound faith that is in these words. Precious Lord, take my hand. Let's rise as we're able and let us sing.
Tekum, little girl, get up. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love always. Amen and amen.